So uh, let me just begin our time. Um, when uh, I think of the term artificial intelligence, I'm tempted to think about opposites, uh, something like um, true or natural intelligence being someone like C.S. Lewis and me being artificial intelligence. But I know that's not exactly what we're, we're talking about here today. Uh, John, can you maybe define for us, uh, a de- give us a definition for artificial intelligence or AI? Artificial intelligence essentially comes in two forms. And it's very important to distinguish them. The first one is usually called narrow AI. And then there's artificial general intelligence or AGI. Mm. Now, narrow AI is the stuff with which we're really familiar. It's the stuff that's working today. And AGI is much more speculative. So let's think a bit about narrow AI. The word narrow refers to the fact that a narrow AI system does typically one single thing that normally requires human intelligence to do. So let me give you an example of that. Let's take uh, x-rays. In this age of COVID, a lot of x-rays of people's lungs are being taken. So we have a huge database consisting of, say, a million pictures of x-rays of lungs. And they've been labeled by top doctors with the diseases the pictures represent. And then we have a, a computer, a powerful computer. And suppose an x-ray is taken of my lungs. And what happens is this AI system compares, it's got an algorithm, a procedure, that automatically compares the picture of my lungs with the million pictures in the database and does that very quickly. And it comes out with the diagnosis that I've got this or that disease. And these days, that kind of system is proving very effective indeed. And and generally speaking, the result is better than you will get from your local doctor. Mm. So that's a typical AI system. Now, The word artificial needs to be taken seriously. The machine is not intelligent. It simply does what it's programmed to do. It simulates intelligence. And that's the important thing. It doesn't think. It simply does what is built into its program. But the result is what you'd normally get by using human intelligence. Mm -hmm. So as one um, the famous early scientist in this field said the word artificial in artificial intelligence is real. <laughs> it's really <laughs> artificial. So that's the first kind. And we're familiar with it, by the way, in our smartphones are constantly suggesting to us that we bought this book and we might be interested in that book. And Amazon search engine is guided by AI, which is picking up a trail of all our purchases and then picking through all its catalog and the algorithm then spits out what we might be interested in. So we're all extremely familiar with this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cooperate with it, even though it's tracing our position and so on and so forth. Facial recognition is another example of the type of technology I'm talking about. And we'll come to that in a moment because it very rapidly raises massive ethical problems. I often say that artificial intelligence is like all technology. It's like a knife, a really sharp knife. You can use it for surgery or you can use it for murder. And there's a downside to AI that you might want to investigate. But before uh, we leave the generality, let's let's think a bit about artificial general intelligence. And as the name suggests, the idea here is to create a machine which can do everything that normally requires human intelligence and do it better and do it faster. And so here we're in the realm of the attempt to create a super intelligence. Now, there are various directions in research, two main ones. The first one is to try to enhance existing humans to make them super intelligent by blending them with technology and turning them into a kind of cyborg, which a lot of people favor. And uh, some folks speculate that one day we will merge with the machines. 
The other way is to try to start from scratch and remove the dependence on biological material and try to, as people say, upload the contents of our minds onto some durable material like silicon and something like that. Now, there's a huge amount of hype. And so this is the kind of speculative stuff that is loved by the makers of science fiction films and the authors of sci-fi books. But I take it seriously in my book because many leading scientists are taking it seriously. Uh, just to give one particular example, our astronomer Royal, one of our very top scientists, Lord Rees, says that we can have zero confidence that the dominant intelligences a few centuries hence will have any emotional resonance with us, even though they may have an algorithmic understanding of how we behaved. And he's suggesting in the far future, it won't be the minds of humans, but those of machines that will most fully understand the cosmos. And because leading scientists like Lord Rees are talking like this, I think it's very important for us to think about the implications of this kind of thing, although it may be many years away. It often amuses me that whenever I ask people or read how long it will be until the so-called singularity occurs, that is when the machines will take over, it's always about 30 to 50 years hence. <laughs> and that's been true for quite some time. So we got these two kinds, Joel. Narrow AI, which is up and working at the moment, uh, with great benefits on the one hand and negatives on the other, which you can ask about if you wish. And then AGI, which is largely speculative, but towards which quite a number of people are going because they see mega dollars in it for in the first place.